Hi again guys, it's Andy here from Awesome 3D Prints with another Awesome 3D Print. And here it is. This is an instructional Awesome 3D Print this time. Um, it's a video to show you guys how to print one file in multiple colours without having to be around, pause the printer, change it yourself, put it back, resume, wait a bit, pause the printer again, etc. It's just, if you miss your timing slot that way, it's really, really awkward. So with this one, what we've actually done is we've actually done it in the slicer. Cura supports the ability to uh, change filaments at certain at certain layer heights, which is quite useful, really. Um, so as you can see, the base printed in red. Cura spat out the filament. I changed it to green. Cura printed in green. Then it spat out the filament, and the top bit's white. You can't tell the top bit's white because I painted it. <laughs> You'll see that in the video anyway. So. I'll show you the video of it of it printing and, and how it worked. I'll show you the video of me slicing it and all the curious settings so you know where to go from there. And then I'll show you the finished article and it being painted afterwards. Cheers guys, take care. Hi guys, first off let me apologise for having to use the camera point at the screen. I don't have any screen catcher software um, with an external microphone at the moment. So I will sort that out for next time I do one of these. But anyway, for now we'll crack on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to uh, take your SDL file and print it in multiple colours. Um, without having to pause it at the right time, change the filament, then unpause it, then pause it again at the same time at the right time. It's, it's a bit of a pain that way. Cura has the ability to automatically eject the filament at set layer heights, and then you can change it, and it will do it. So if you miss the bit where you wanted to, it will just be there waiting for you. You haven't got to think, oh god, I've got to, I've got to stop it at this exact time. It's a much much better way of doing it. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a Joker logo that I want in three different colours. Now it's quite a small print, so it's only going to uh, it's only going to take a, I think 50 minutes or so in total to print. But there it is. Now, the way to do this is first of all, the first filament you're going to use. In my case, it's going to be a silk red. Now that likes to be printed at 210 degrees. So you set all your parameters. I want 0.2 layer height, uh, three sh three walls to make it nice and solid. Uh, infill of 15% which is more than enough for what I'm doing printing material now 210 is what I want um, I want the build plate temperature at 60 but I want the first initial layer at 70 degrees Celsius that way it'll be nice and uh, nice and warm to stick the first layer down and then it'll cool down to that to help keep maintain the integrity of the print um, speed I'm doing it at 60 it should be a fairly good question you know what I'm going to do it a bit better. I'm going to do it at 50 just to try and improve the quality slightly. Um, cooling on and supports off for this one, don't need. So you set all of your settings as you normally would do for your first print that you're going to do. Um, once you've got that done, click slice and then get rid of your settings because you don't need them anymore and it just obscures it. Click on preview and on preview on the right hand side here you'll see you've got a slider bar. I'm sure you've seen it before. This shows you what it's doing at what specific layer height. Now, what I want to do is I want to find out on this print, because I want the base to be red, as I said. I want to find out at what point it stops printing the base layers and starts printing the letters. So we just scroll up until you can see no more um, base layers being added. It's just doing the text. Now, in this, in this particular instance, it stops doing the base layers there so that's at layer 8 so what I want it to do is I want it to change from the red to a green at layer to layer 8 so what you do is you click on extensions go into post processing and then modify g-code ah as you can see here I've still got all the ones left in there from last time that's one thing you have to actually remember um, which I obviously didn't you need to once you've set these settings in place for whatever print you're doing, they will stay there. So if you do this project now, you get all your color changes right, you go away, you close Cura, come back, the settings will still be there. So if you haven't remembered to delete them and you do you slice another project, start it printing, it's going to stop at the same layer height and expect you to change the filament. So when you finish this, make sure you delete them, otherwise they're still going to be there like I've just done. Anyway, <laughs> we'll carry on. What I want to do is you want to add a script go down to filament change and then on the right hand side you'll see layer now where it says layer you need to put in the layer height you want it to change now this one we decided it was layer height 8 so I'll put 8 in the box now the next thing to do is you've got to bear in mind 
that because you're printing with different filaments, each filament has different print temperatures that it would like to be printed at. The silk that I'm using first time, like I said, likes to be printed at 210 degrees, but the one that I'm changing to, the green, likes to be printed at 190 degrees. And if you print at 210, you don't get such a nice, nice finish to it. It doesn't quite go as it should. You can get a little bit of oozing and stuff and string, and you don't want that. So you need to, to change the temperature at the same time. Now to do that, after you've done your first one, you click Add Script again. Go down to Change at Z5.1.1 Experimental. And then you'll click Height and change that to Layer Number. As Behavior, select Keep Value. And then scroll down, oh, first of all, change layer, do that one first. Now we're changing this one at layer number eight. So you'd think you wanna change this one at layer eight as well. It doesn't, because this one changes after layer eight. So you want it to start at the beginning of air, so you need to change it to, le to number seven. So it will change after layer seven. So it should change at the same time the other one starts printing. And what you want it to change, if you go down the list, is extruder temperature one obviously I've only got the one extruder which is why I'm having to go through this pain of changing the colors <laughs> and then in that box you set it to the temperature you wanted to go to now as it happens it popped up with a default for PLA for mine which is 190 which is exactly what I want so that's fine so you click close click slice if it wasn't 190 obviously you change that to where you want it to be now you look at your print again or your STL again and you scroll up on the bar until you get to the next point you want to change colors now I want it to change as soon as it starts doing his face so there's his face appearing there as you can see just pops up now I want his face to be white now I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of painting on this one because I want his hair to be completely green but his hair actually doesn't stick up it sticks up further than his face so a little bit of touch up on his hair is gonna be required but not a massive amount so anyway there it is going up to there now looking at that it's layer 22 is where his face appears so I want obviously yeah no 23 is where his face appears 22 is where the first one so 21 I think is the right place to change it so layer 21 I want that to be white so again you click on extensions post processing and modify g-code click add script filament change and this time I want layer 21 and again, I'm using a different filament, which likes a different temperature. I'm going to use PLA Plus for the last surface, which likes to be printed slightly hotter, the brand that I've got. So we want change at Z5.1.1 experimental again. Um, change that to layer again. And we want to change that to, because it finishes after with 20, because it finishes after layer 20. So it'll be the right temperature for printing the new filament. And again, it's extruded temperature one. And we want that this time at 220 degrees, like that and close and slice again. Now that's it all done. So what you need to do now is obviously save it to your SD card, which I shall pop out my machine now. Stick it in the USB socket. And slice. I'm also gonna video it, um, video the it printing. I'll try and catch it on the camera where it changes, changes the Asks you to change a filament, so you won't. Uh, you should see what happens, but it's pretty straightforward. If I miss it, I miss it. But hopefully, I'll get it for you. Right, I'll uh, go to the printer now, set that printing, and uh, hopefully catch it when it changes. All right, catch you in a bit. time now yeah there you go that's it lifts the head up bed slides backwards and the head goes to home so now it will feed the filament out by itself as you'll see it start to go up the, up the Bowden tube here there you go pick it out fairly sharpish because the end's still hot and it'll... there we go Sorry, excuse the banging noise, that's me so putting the front away so I don't lose the end and end up getting all wrapped up. Right, the green one here, 
can be a bit tricky to feed in because since I've put this new filament sensor back on it, it can be a little bit awkward to feed through the bone, so sometimes you have to play about with it a little bit. Oh, now so that's gone through first time perfect. Now look, feed it about halfway down the tube. Don't feed it all the way to the end like I would normally do because it, it self feeds anyway when it changes the filament. So you don't want too much in there otherwise it'll just end up squeezing all out the end. Not that that's too much of a problem. You do want to purge a little bit because you don't want any red left in there when it starts changing. Once you've done that, all you've got to do is press the button on the control point. It says insert filament and press button to continue. Well, I've done that, so press button. And now it's loading the filament. You'll see it moving down the Bowden tube quite slowly there. If you pick up the clicking noise on camera, it's not my extruder, it's the filament sensor. The filament run out sensor, and the, the new one I've printed is still a bit stiff, and it's uh, it's rocking backwards and forwards. It doesn't interfere with the print, and I'm sure it'll sort itself out. If not, I'll take a file to it at some point. There you go, the filament's just entered the hot end now, and you should see in a second it start coming out the bottom. Well, there's a little bit of red coming out. That's it, now the green's it's pushing it through. That's all the red coming out. More red coming out. That is the filament sensor. Look, if I hold the filament sensor, it stops making that horrible noise. <laughs> it's now purging to get rid of the last few bits. Now, look at it whilst it's doing it. If it's all green, you know it's purged perfectly fine. If it's not and there's still red coming out of it, then you can. there's an option at the end to purge some more. Looks like we should be okay. There you go, that's it, perfect. It's all green, there's no red on there, as you can see, so that's perfect. And you've got the option to purge more or continue. We're done, so we click continue. If you're not, just purge some more. And now it'll carry on printing in the green colour for the top layer. Right, I'm not going to show you it changing again, because I don't fancy sitting around until the last, last layer change is done. But uh, when it's finished, I'll show you the finished article. All right, catch you later. Well, there's the finished article. Turned out pretty much as I'd like it to. I think next time if I was to do it again, I'd enable ironing to smooth out the surfaces of the uh, the wording and the surface there, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it for what it is. It changed color perfectly where I wanted it to. Red for the base, green for letters, and white for the face. I'm just gonna try and touch up whether I'll be able to or not the, the face, try and paint the face a little bit. Just do his hair green and Maybe some red for his lips or whatever. We'll do our best. As if and I'm not very good at painting, but we'll try. All right, here it goes. <laughs> Right, so here's a finished article. It's still wet, so I'm not going to touch it too much. Excuse the awful, awful paint job. It is absolutely horrendous. If you look from a distance, it doesn't look too bad. But anyway, 
That's it. As you can see, the actual print bit went really well. The, the red stayed where they were supposed to be, the green stayed where they were supposed to be, and the white stayed where it's supposed to be. So generally, it printed really, really well. Like I said, I'd probably enable ironing um, on the surfaces to give it a bit of a smoother print, a smoother finish next time. That's, that's my own fault, really. Um, but generally, yeah, very pleased with that. So let me know what you guys think in the comment in the comments, if you would. And uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe and uh, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I do a new video. Cheers guys, take it easy.